here's our plotting script from before. Uh, so let's just run that and remind ourselves of what it does. So here is the output. Uh, one thing that I want to show you, if I uh, leave this figure up and just go back to my editor and then run it again, uh, what's happened here is that MATLAB has kept the figure, updated it, but kept it in the background. And so I'd have to Alt-Tab uh, to actually see that figure. So one way to fix that is to simply close all the figures that might be existing uh, before you run your script. So I just put this close all at the beginning of the uh, script here. So running that now, what we see is that uh, the figure always will come to the front because it will be a brand new figure and therefore will be created on top of all of the other windows. So there's a few problems with this plot as it appears. Usually we would label these axes. We need a legend and we probably also want to put a title. So let's uh, have a look at how we would do that. So let's uh, annotate the figure. So to put uh, labels on the axes, we have a function x label. Uh, which will label the x-axis and y-label which will label the y-axis. So let's say I had that uh, x and f of x. Let's run that. So notice here that uh, x and f of x have been labeled on the x and the y-axis respectively. We want a legend and so the way that the legend function works is that we supply the legend text uh, in the order that we plotted the function. So I plotted e to the x squared first and then I plotted this one second. So let's do it like that. Now if I had put a third plot on the same figure then I would put another comma here and then another string which would be the legend uh, text that would appear. So when I run that notice now here that uh, we have legend entries created for both of the two functions that we have plotted. And finally a title something like that. So there's uh, the final version of our plot. So as you might expect, there's actually a whole lot of uh, other customization that we can do uh, to these plots. And so I'm going to show you how you can do that. So on the Tools menu here, if you click Edit Plot, uh, then if you right click on some element and go Show Property Editor, then you get a window like this. And so now what you can do is go through and click on various elements in your plot and depending on what you have selected, uh, you'll get a different set of options uh, in the bottom down here. So for example, if I click on this line, I can maybe make it thicker, choose a different color, uh, click on this line here, maybe I say I didn't want those markers, actually I would prefer these instead, maybe choose a color for that. Uh, and so we can actually go through and uh, customize this plot quite a bit. And so you might wonder, well, how can we do that from our scripts? And the answer to that is we need to know the properties uh, that we can set on the various objects. And so for that here, we click on this More Properties link and we get this window here. And so these here are the list of all of the various properties that each of these uh, grid objects have or each of these figure objects have. And so what we can do is actually look up the name of something in this list and play around with changing it here and then I'll show you in a moment how you could set that uh, in your actual script. So before we do that, let's have a look. I'm going to show you uh, the documentation page for the axes function because I want you to see this link here, axes properties. And so this is the documentation for that big long list of uh, axes properties that we were just looking at inside the plot editor. And so, for example, a common thing uh, that you might want to do is actually change the location of the tick marks that appear in the axes. So, to show you what I mean, if we look again at our figure, see here the tick marks uh, negative 3, negative 2, 1, and so on. Suppose we wanted to put the ticks at uh, different numbers. So, what we look at here is this particular property x tick, y tick, and z tick for x, y, and z axes respectively and so here is the documentation for it so it's a vector of data values that determine the location of the tick marks along the respective axes so let's have a look suppose that instead of uh, steps of 1 here so negative uh, 3 to negative 2 I want to go in steps of 0 0.5 so how might I do that well 
uh, this is to use uh, the way to do that is to use the set function and so the set function requires uh, the object that we're setting so here is we'll, we'll use this function GCA which stands for get current axes and so that will return uh, a handle to the current axes so that we can use them in the set function and then we need the name of the property that we are setting so that was x tick. You could have also gotten that from that list in the property editor that I showed you before in, in the uh, when you were editing the plot. So let's go back here to our help. So it was property was called x tick, and the value that it has is a vector of locations that determine where the tick marks are. So the name appears here, and then the value. And so for this, I'm going to go negative three steps of 0 0.5 up to plus three. Let's run that. And notice now that our tick marks are placed uh, differently according to how we specified uh, the option here. So there's a whole lot of things that you can customize. Uh, you can browse through this one uh, as you want. So something that you will need in the lab is this one here, X tick label, which is to say rather than uh, MATLAB automatically generating the labels, which is the, the bit of text that appears here, you need to supply your own. And so that's the property that you will need uh, to use for that. A couple more useful Axie properties that I want to draw your attention to um, is uh, these ones here, X grid and Y grid, uh, which allows you to set uh, a grid line which appears in your plot. Um, X label and Y label, you've actually already been setting those through the use of these functions, but this is simply an alternative way uh, to achieve the same thing. Uh, X lim and Y lim, so these are quite important. So this is basically the minimum and the maximum values on the respective axes. So by default, if we look at our figure here, MATLAB chooses the minimum and the maximum to span the data, but sometimes you might not want that. You might prefer if uh, you chop off part of your data or something like that, for example. So uh, suppose I wanted to, I'll give you an example, only plot uh, the right-hand side from zero onwards uh, in this plot. I can take this existing plot and then do something like, let's run it over here in our script, set get current axes, x lim, and I want to go from 0 up to 3, say. So now when I run that, now we have specifically said that we want our x-axis to run from 0 to 3 only. And you can do a similar thing for the y-axis just by putting y-lim in here.